Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz that puts obscure knowledge to the test. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Kevin and this is my friend Drew. We're from East London and Colchester. Couple number two. Hi, my name's Tahira. This is my sister Hanifa. We're both from East London. Couple number three. Hi, my name's Laura. This is my boyfriend Jack and we're from Manchester. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Cassie. This is my mum, Kath, and we're from Newport in South Wales. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining me. Very warm welcome to the show. Lovely to have you with us. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. A steady hand on the tiller of trivia with the sou'wester of truth perched jauntily on his head. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon Good to afternoon. you. Wow, familiar mm. lineup here. Three mm. pairs returning from last time. Uh, Hanifa and Tahira, welcome back. Got knocked out in round one last time. Hopefully see a little bit more of you this time. Jack and Laura knocked out in round two. And Drew and Kevin got through to that uh, that head-to-head -head where they were beaten by Jackie and Helen. Yeah. And that was one of those final rounds where you said to Jackie and Helen, what sort of thing would you like to come up? And they said rugby union. And rugby union came up. Mm. They took home £5,000 with a question on, uh, mm. on Grand Slam winners. They did. Didn't they? They absolutely smashed it. Listen, no one wants them to take home £5,000. I know that because it's essentially stealing it from you. But <laughs> they were lovely. They were lovely. So if someone's going to steal £5,000 from you, better that it's Jackie and Helen. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Listen, you, you got the nuts and bolts of that, which basically means we are going to start off today with a jackpot of £1,000. There it is. We've got a right. lovely first round as well today, I think. Oh, that's right. It's nice. That's right. It's nice. You may have some trouble with it, but it's, uh, it's a very sweet one. If everyone's ready, let's play pointless. All you have to remember, your only task for today is to remember that the pair with the highest score at the end of each round will be eliminated. So, therefore, just keep your scores as low as you can. Very best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category today is foreign language versions of films. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... French titles of Disney animated films. Richard. Yes, on each board we're going to show you the titles of seven Disney animated films, but uh, under the titles they were released in France. OK, so uh, you just have to tell us the English titles of these films. It's going to be 14 in all to have a go at, at home. You quite like doing a, a French accent, though, don't I do. you? I do. I do enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, that's not... It's, it's when we get Scandinavian, you slightly, <sighs> slightly lose it. But uh, French, you'll enjoy. <laughs> Thank you very much. OK, so here are the French titles under which these Disney films were released. En France. Oui. Where? Allons-y. Blanche Neige et les Sept Nains, 1937. Cendrillon, 1950. La Belle et le Clochard, 1955. Le Livre de la Jungle, 1967. Taram et le Chaudron Magique, 1985. La Belle et la Bête, 1991. And La Princesse et la Grenouille. 2009. Thank you very much. <laughs> there we are. I'll read those one last time. Blanche Neige et les Satinants. Centrion. La Belle et la Clochard. Le Livre de la Jungle. Taram et le Chaudron Magique. La Belle et la Bête. And La Princesse et la Grenouille. Kevin. Welcome back to Pointless. Um, remind us all about yourself. Um, no, Drew, for a long while we both play in a, a band together. You play in a band together called the Old Street Rockers. That's right. Um, but you worked at Old Street. We did. You were you worked for the post office yeah. there. Okay. Now, Kevin, the Disney films. How are we uh, how are we feeling about those? I'm all right, Disney films, but not in French. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm going to go for one of the obvious ones, um, the first one, which is um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. You've got to hope. Let's see. How many of our 100 spotted Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? It's right. That's not bad, actually. 40, Kevin. Gets us off to a pretty solid start. 40 to Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Yeah, Disney's first full-length feature film. Uh, that was, I think, all the other studios, uh, they called it Disney's Folly, because they thought it was going to be a huge disaster. But, of course, it was the beginning of, uh, of extraordinary things for them. Of course, all the Seven Dwarfs uh, have French names as well. So Doc, for example, is Prof. 
but the best one is Sneezy. Uh, the, the French name for Sneezy is Atume. <laughs> Atume. Good name, though, isn't it? That's a good name. That's a good name. Uh, Hanifa, welcome back. Thank you. Now then, last time, far too <laughs> soon you left us. I know. This time through, I think. I, I want That's to right. see you in the head-to-head, -head, please. <laughs> um, remind us all about yourself, Hanifa. Um, so I investigate financial complaints as a job, and when I'm not doing that, I'm looking after two very naughty rabbits. And uh, when you're doing your investigation, is that desk-bound investigation, or do you go out as you sort of... Um, I was picturing you maybe just sort of with a paper, <laughs> standing outside shops, just following, <laughs> just following a few transactions. I wish. Oh. Uh, um, now then, Hanifa, what are you going to go for on, uh, um, on our board here? I'm going to go for the third one down and say Lady and the Tramp. The Lady and the Tramp. OK, let's see if La Belle et le Clochard is the Lady and the Tramp. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It is the Lady and the Tramp, and you pass 40 with that. Right down to seven. Very well done indeed, Hanifa. That's the way you should be continuing. Yeah, clochard is French for vagabond. It's mm. a good word. Thank you very much. Good indeed. answer, then. At seven yeah, points, it's a very good answer. Um, Laura, welcome back to Pointers. Remind us all about yourself. Um, so I work for the Open University. Um, also quite interested in travel. Um, that's like an interest of mine as well. Very good indeed. Well, you work with the Open University. What what, what do you do there? Um, so I'm a senior advisor. Um, that means I help students essentially. A lot of it's by correspondence, though, isn't it? Um, the Open so university, or is it increasingly less so? It's um, so it's a distance learning university. Yeah. So students can be anywhere in the world, really. But my work then is sort of on the phone, um, emails. See. So I reaching see. out to those students. I see. All right. Very good. Now, Laura, what are you going to go for here? Um, I know there's one on there which is, like, quite obvious, but I think I'm going to try and go slightly risky, go for number... the fifth one. Yeah. And say Aladdin. OK, one, two, three, four, five... Ah, yes, number the fifth one. Taram et la Chaudron Magique. Aladdin. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Aladdin for that. Oh, I'm sorry, Laura. I applaud your risk-taking, though. Little bit wrong with the answer, that's all. <laughs> but uh, I'm afraid that scores you 100 points. Sorry. Uh, yeah, not allowed. And I can sort of see how you got there, but mm. I'll, I'll give all the answers at the end of the pass. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And now, Kath, welcome. Hi. Welcome, welcome. Great to have you here from Newport. Yes. Tell us all about yourself, Kath. I'm a part time supply teaching assistant. So, you go, whereabouts? How far do you travel? For um, this? Within my area, I don't like to go too far. I like to stay within my my area, but I could have a call to go to one school one day and another school another day and whenever. <laughs> Very nice. I could Very... not have a call at all. Oh, no, no call at all. Yeah. You have to sit at home. a day off. <laughs> How nice. Um, and Kath, um, you're the last person to have this board. Do you feel like talking us through it? Uh, I can try. I think the second one is Cinderella, I think. The... Jungle one is, is it the king of the jungle? I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to go with the bottom one, which I believe is the princess and the frog. The princess and the frog, yeah. says Kath. Let's see if that's right. Uh, how many of our 100 people said the princess and the frog? It is the princess and the frog. 38. <laughs> not bad at all, Kath. 38. Well played, Kath. I was honestly sitting there going, I didn't know that Grand Wee was French for pea. I was, thinking, <laughs> I was really thinking it was the princess and the pea. Just all the way through the round, I was thinking, that's that one. Uh, yeah, very well done, Princess and the Frog. Very good answer. I don't think they did a film they with the princess and the pea. Yes. It'd be or quite a boring would. film, because only one thing happens. Yeah, but they could embellish it, I guess. What I suppose they could make so. each of those uh, mattresses could be a character. A char different character. Ah. Yeah. Be fun. And the poor downtrodden pea at the bottom there. Oh, yes. Um, shall we fill in the rest of these? You did very well on the second one. You're quite right, that is Cinderella. That would have scored you 54. Uh, Le Livre de la Jungle. Jungle Book. Jungle Book, yeah. Livre Book. 86 points for that. Now, the next one is not Aladdin. Do you know that one? I don't know what that one could possibly be. I mean... It's, it's just the Black Cauldron. 
the Black Cauldron. Didn't know. So well done if you said well, that. Would have scored two points. Best one there. And La Belle et la Bête. Is the Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. Absolutely. Which scored 71. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. Oh, look at that. Hanifa, the best score of the pass is yours. Seven. Very well done indeed. Then up to 38, where we find Kath and Cassie. Then up to 40, where we find Kevin and Drew. Then up to 100, I'm afraid. Laura and Jack, I'm so sorry. That, that shouldn't be your reward for taking such a big risk, but uh, I'm afraid there it is. Jack. You really do have to take a big risk. Uh, in the next pass, make sure you find a nice low-scoring answer. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? Let's put seven more Disney films in French up on the board. Here they come. We have got Alice au Pays des Merveilles, 1951. La Belle au Bois Dormant, 1959. Merlin, l'Enchanteur, 1963. Robin, des Bois, 1973. Rox et Rookie, 1981. La Petite Sirène, 1989. And Le Roi Léon, 1994. There we are. I'll read those one last time. Alice au Pays des Merveilles, La Belle au Bois Dormant, Merlin, Enchanteur, Robin, des Bois, Rox et Rookie, La Petite Sirène, and Le Roi Léon. There we are. Now, Cassie, welcome. Hi. Great to have you here, Cassie. Tell us all about yourself. Um, I just finished my A-levels, so I'm going to university soon. Hopefully. That's exciting, very exciting. Yeah. Did you do well? Were they okay? I did do well, yeah. The, the results come through at sort of six in the morning or something, don't they? Uh, like eight in the morning, but eight in the morning. I was awake all night. Oh, I know. And you just look at them yourself and yeah. then... Oh. Did, were were they what you hoped they would be? To be honest, they were better. I'm not even joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so pleased. Um, now then, Cassie, lovely, fresh board there. Um, what are you going to go for? Um, I'll go for the first one, Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland, says Cassie. Let's see if that is right. Here is your red line. Get below that. And you are definitely into the next round. How many people said Alice in Wonderland? 80 takes your total up to 118. Yeah, and the girl who provided the voice for Alice was also uh, Wendy and Peter Pan. That's nice. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, very good. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Jack, welcome back. Um, yeah. Remind us all about yourself, Jack. Uh, so, I work for an exam board in Manchester, and um, on the weekends, mostly, I'm a really keen golfer. Very good indeed. OK, now, Jack, you're on 100. You now have a target which is 17 or less. Um, I think I know a few, but um, in terms of a one that's going to be low, I'll have to go for it. Um, so it will be the uh, the fifth one down, Roxé Rookie. Is it Romulus and Remus? Romulus and Remus for Roxé Rookie. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. There is your red line, Romulus and Remus. Sorry, Jack, I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. Scores you 100 points. Out in a blaze of glory you go, our newest members of the 200 Club. That's great. Isn't it nice? We yeah, always welcome new members. Oh, always. <laughs> always. Uh, you'll get the newsletter shortly. Uh, <laughs> if you're quick, you can uh, be part of our, our annual trip to Bangor Pier, which is nice. It's lovely. It really is. It's, it's, a, it's a special event. It's quite always. something, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of people forget to turn up, don't they? But this and yeah. that's... Uh... Yeah, it's always nice. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Tahira. Welcome back, by the Thank way. Um, remind us all about yourself. Uh, I'm currently a student, about to go in my third year. And when I'm not being a student, uh, I work part-time at a jeweller's. That, what, what are you studying? Uh, psychology. There we go. And do you know yet what you want to do when you, when you come um, out the other end? I have a rough end? idea. I mean, the main goal, or the end goal, really, is to become a therapist. So, Excellent. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, good luck with that. Now, Thank Tahira, you. you a beautiful low score from uh, Hanifa and a beautiful high score from Jack and Laura means that uh, it doesn't actually matter what you score here. You're definitely in round two, which yeah, is a bonus. Yeah, it worked in my favour. Really. Uh, yeah. With that wind behind you, uh, why not uh, stick your neck out of it, see if you can find a nice... Yeah, I'm thinking, should I risk it? Yes. First? But now I can, so I'm going to go for the third one. Yeah, I'm just going to say Merlin. Merlin. Merlin, OK. Uh, no red line, you're already through. How many of our 100 people said Merlin? It's wrong, it scores 100 points, takes the total up to 107, but you're through. It's fine. Uh, yeah, safe and sound. Doesn't matter what you say. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Drew, welcome back. Thank you. 
Welcome back. Good to have you with us uh, again. Remind us all about yourself. Uh, I play the drums. That's my full-time job. Um, and in my spare time, I do a lot of cycling, swimming and running and do some triathlons. Very nice, very nice. Now, um, when you play drums at home, do you have a garage with lots of padding in or do you have a practice kit? Um, sadly, no. I have a dining room, which um, now has my drum kit. It's an electronic drum kit, ah. so I've got my headphones on. That's my good. wife still moans like mad because she can hear the tapping. Oh, and even that bothers her? Yeah, that bothers her. Oh, she should be glad you haven't got the full she kit. Be. Before I got the electronic, she, she actually bought me the electronic kit because I had the acoustic kit in the dining room and the neighbours used to <laughs> complain, as well as my wife. Uh, does your electronic kit match exactly the acoustic kit? Uh, yes, pretty much. So you've got yeah. the same number yeah. of toms and all the yeah. same, yeah. 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 Ah, that's nice. Um, OK, now, Drew, you're through. You're through. Doesn't yeah. matter what you score here. Um, also, look at this beautiful empty board. OK. Um, my French is terrible, um, so I have no clue whatsoever what any of them are. Um, the, the second bottom one, the small something, I think, but I've no idea what, the small siren, the small horse, um, the small donkey, <laughs> the small pig. The, I have no idea. But I'm going to have a guess at um, the, the, the Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> you just took us all around <laughs> Old MacDonald's farm <laughs> and we ended up with what could probably be the right answer. OK, um, no red line for you, as you're already through. How many of our 100 have said The Little Mermaid? There we are, 49, 89 is your total. Very well done indeed, Drew. Very nicely played. Yeah, we had two incorrect answers in that uh, last pass, and they, they were the two best scorers up there. So I, I will take you through the, the bigger scorers first. Uh, La Belle uh, au Bois d'Aumont. Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, the beauty who sleeps in the woods. 38 points for that. Robin des Bois. Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Robin of the Woods. Would have scored you 71. Uh, Le Roi Lion. Uh, Lion King. Lion King. Uh, 90. So these are the best two answers. Uh, Merlin l'Enchanteur. It's called Merlin, Merlin the Magician. Is Merlin's it, in the film. But oh, it's, right. it's oh, entirely right. different. We called it It's the Sword in the Stone. Ah, oh, yes. Sword there in the Stone. You go. Would have scored you six points. Uh, and Rox et Rookie, that is the Fox and the Hound. The Fox wow. and the Hound, five Thank points for that. Thank you very much indeed. Well, we are at the end of our first round. We have to say goodbye to one of our pairs, Jack and Laura. I'm so sorry. The first to fall. <laughs> uh, it's been lovely having you back. And I'm sorry it's been so brief, but uh, thanks so much for playing. Jack and Laura. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Well done, everybody. We made it through French Disney. Hanifa, covered yourself in glory there. Well done to you. Drew and Kevin, not for the first time, our lowest combined scorers as well. And uh, Kat and Kath, just lovely to have you with us. Uh, best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two today is chemistry. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many chemical elements that contain the letter T as they could. Richard. Yep, simply any element on the periodic table as of July 2019, please, that contains the letter T. Thank you very much indeed. So, chemical elements containing the letter T. Drew, do you want a bit of time to think about this, or are you...? Um, I was actually looking at the periodic tables oh. on the train on the way here. Was it, was it the most um, up-to-date one? Well, I hope so. Oh, yeah. so do I. I'm just struggling to remember anything with tea in it, though. <laughs> I had some obscure ones. Um, I think I'm going to go for plutonium. Plutonium, says Drew. Let's see how many of our 100 people agree with Drew. Plutonium. It's right. Down it goes to 20. Yeah, the London plutonium is next door to the London palladium. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, uh, Tahira. Yeah, um, I feel... I feel all right. Um, I've got a couple in my head, but I'm just thinking what to go for. I think I'm going to take a bit of a risk, go for one of the newer ones, say technetium. Technetium. Technetium, says Tahira. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. 
It's absolutely right. 20 is the only score we have so far. And we pass. And it goes down six. Very well done indeed to hear This is brilliant. Very well done on that middle podium there, technician. Uh, terrific answer. It was the first element to be artificially produced, technician. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Kath. Hi. We just want a chemical element with a T in its name. That's all we want. This is not very good for me, but I did hear a word the other day, so I'm going... <laughs> I'm going to take a punt. Lithium. Lithium, says Kath. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said lithium. It is right. 20 is the high, 6 is the low. 28 for lithium. Not bad at all, Kath. Not bad at all. I do like an answer that begins, well, I heard a word the other day, so I'm just going <laughs> to say it. Uh, yes, yeah, the lightest metal in the periodic table. It's also the first uh, element in the periodic table that has a T in its name. That's nice. nice. So, yeah. Well done, Lithium. Well done, Lithium. Congratulations. Well done. Yeah, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. Six. You're making a habit of this. Uh, Tahira and Hanifa looking very strong there in the middle. Uh, then we travel up to 20, where we find Drew and Kevin. 28 is where we find Kath and Cassie. So, yeah, you're a little bit ahead. Cassie, a nice low score from you. Might just even things up a bit, which would be great. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, so remember, Cassie, it's any chemical element that has the letter T in its name. Um, oh. Granite. Granite. <laughs> <laughs> no red line for you as you're the high scorers, but uh, let's see what happens when we say <laughs> granite. <laughs> oh, bad luck. I'm sorry, Cassie, not granite. Yeah. I'm afraid. It does have a T in it, though. Yeah. Uh, but that scores you 100 <laughs> points, takes your total up to 128. Kath, it turns out Cassie heard a word the other day as well and decided <laughs> to say it. It was the wrong word. Yeah. You know what? It would be a terrific answer for kitchen worktops with a T in them. That would be... <laughs> there we go. Which we have done before as a round. <laughs> that was and a by short the way, one. then, technician would be a terrible answer in that round. So, you know, it yeah. swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, thank you, Richard. Now, Hanifa. You're through, by the way, to the head-to-head, -head, just in case you didn't realise that. Through to the head-to-head, -head. so it doesn't matter what you score here, but I bet you've got a good answer. I've got a couple in my head. Yeah. Um, I'll go risky, I'll say Einsteinium. Einsteinium, says Hanifa. No red line, you're already through. How many of our 100 people said Einsteinium? It's right. That's a good answer. Down it goes to nine. Very well done indeed. 15 your total. Superb. Uh, what a performance on Podium 2 there. Well played, both of you. Yeah, uh, named after Einstein, of course, who also has an asteroid named after him, and he has four craters on the moon named after him. Why do you need four craters named after you? <laughs> but, you know, I bet you don't have a crater on the moon named after you, for example. Only two. Only two. You got two? I know. I know. Wow. Uh, thank you very much, Richard. Um, now, Kevin, chemical elements with a T in them. I'm going to go for strontium. Let's find out. No red line view. You're straight through anyway. Let's see how many of our 100 people said strontium. <laughs> Down that goes to 11. Very well done indeed. 31 for you. <laughs> Another great total. Yeah, lovely end to the round. Well played. Uh, our 100 did very well. There's only four pointless answers uh, out of anything. So I'll give you some of the low scorers. Uh, four points for lanthanum, neptunium, uh, Yttrium and Tennessine, one of the new ones, scored four points already. Three points for Rutherfordium, our old favourite. Uh, two for Lutetium, Ruthenium and Thulium. You've got one for Bismuth, one for Rutgenium, and here are your four oh, points. Oh, 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 oh you've got one? Yeah, yeah, I have, but what you have haven't yet mentioned it. So I'm either it's, score, it's, it's gone into the high-scoring league, okay. Protactinium. Protactinium? Yeah. Well, should we take a look at the pointless answers? Oh, good, and if good, it's not good, there, good. I'll tell you where it is. OK. OK, here are the pointless answers. Darmstadtium, very well known for not being protactinium. Yeah. Uh, Mitonarium, named after Lisa Mite. Meitner, very well known for not being protactinium. Uh, Promethium, famously discovered when someone was looking for protactinium uh, and <laughs> turned it over. Yeah. Uh, there is one more. Oh, there it is. Oh, hooray. 
good. Oh, thank goodness for that. Well done. Ah, oh, it's my it's my new favourite. Protactinium. Yeah, love it. Sorry, remind me what it's used mm. for. Uh, flavouring mint choc chip ice lollies. <laughs> mm. um. It's mm. actually used for toasters. Is it really? Nope. No. <laughs> Of course it's not. Of course it's not. Of course not. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it is, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what they're up to, these oh, scientists. Could be anything. Yeah, could be. Uh, no, what they use in toasters, the, for the element in toasters, is granite. They use granite, so that's what that's for. <laughs> that's what that's for. It just warms up, it warms yeah. up beautifully. Mm. Um, should we take a look at the top three? Yeah, go on. Let's take a look at the top three. The ones that most of our 100 people said. Nitrogen would have scored you 30, there's the T. A uh, tin, I suppose, that makes sense, would have scored 36, and right at the top. Titanium. Titanium on 60, because they've got the double T there. Double T. Right yeah, at the top. I guess that's it. Uh, well, thank you very much indeed, Richard. We are at the end of our second round. Once again, it falls to me to say goodbye to one of our pairs. I can't bear it. I'm sorry, Cassie and Kath. <laughs> this is where we say goodbye. Not for long, though. No. You'll be back next time, yeah. when I'm sure you'll go even further. But uh, for the meantime, thank you very much, Cassie and Kath. But for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. <laughs> Many congratulations, Drew and Kevin, Hanifa and Tahira. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, currently standing at £1,000. But it's the head-to-head, -head, so now you play as a pair. First pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Um, hard to call. Who knows? Uh, yeah, nice to have our two returning pairs back, but they're, both pairs are leaving. One of them leaving with a pointless trophy, one of them without. Who's there it going to be? Who's it going to be? <laughs> Let's play the head to head. <laughs> now, here is your first question, and it concerns famous Bristolians. Richard. Yes, five pictures now of famous people who were born in the Bristol area. Uh, but who are they, please? <laughs> That's nice. Um, OK, let's see who they are. Five of them. We have got... A... B... C... D... And E. There we are. Five Bristolians. Uh, Drew and Kevin, you're our low scorers. You get to go first. Feel free to confer. Um, we, I think we know three on the board. Um, I think we're going to go for E and say Joe Jury. Joe Jury. OK, Joe Jury, say Drew and Kevin. Now then, Hanifa and Tahira, do you want to talk us through the rest of that board? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, famous Bristolians is not our forte. Um, we only know the one, which is C, which we believe is Lee Evans. OK, Lee Evans. So we have Joe Jury and we have Lee Evans. Drew and Kevin. Joe Jury for E. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Joe Jury. It is Joe Jury. And that's a great score. Look at that. Ten. Uh, Hanifa and Tahira, meanwhile, have gone for Lee Evans for C. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Lee Evans. It's right. Ooh, 59 for Lee Evans. Very well done, Drew and Kevin. After one question, you're up 1-0. Uh, yeah, a couple of answers that have beaten Joe Jury, but both tough, I would say. Uh, the only other big scorer is Cary Grant there, A. He would have scored you 41 points. But the other two, well done if you got either of these. You know, B is Alex Beresford, the Good Morning Britain weather forecast. Oh, that's exactly who it is. Points. That's right. He's been on the show. He has indeed, yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, I think I really... I know him. Who on earth is that? He's brilliant. And... This famous Bristolian is a pointless answer. It is Pete Budd from the Wurzels. <sighs> Very well done if you said Pete Budd. Wow. And once Pete you say Budd. he's in the Wurzels, you go, of course. Of course he is. Pete Budd. Uh, thanks very much indeed, Richard. OK, here comes your second question. Hanifa and Tahira, you get to answer it first. Have to win it to stay in the game. Uh, our second question is all about... 
wordplay, Rich. Yeah, we're going to show you five uh, descriptions of types of wordplay that might be used in puzzles or things like that. But we're only showing each uh, alternate letter. Can you fill in the gaps and tell us what these bits of wordplay are, please? OK, let's reveal our five wordplays, and here they are. We have got a word formed from the initial letters of other words, A-R-N-M, swapping the initial sounds of two or more words, S-O-N-R-S, a verse in which the first letters in each line form a word or phrase, A-R-S-I. A word used so as to suggest more than one of its meanings, P-N. And a word or phrase that reads the same in either direction, P-L-N-R-M. There we are. I'll read those one last time. A word formed from the initial letters of other words, swapping the initial sounds of two or more words, a verse in which the first letters in each line form a word or phrase, a word used so as to suggest more than one of its meanings, and a word or phrase that reads the same in either direction. There we are. Hanifa and Tahira will go first. I think I know the last one. Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. I'll let you say it because I don't know the next one. Um, we'll go for the last one and say palindrome. Palindrome, say Hanifa and Tahira. Now then. Drew and Kevin, the board is all yours. Do you fancy filling in those blanks for us? Uh, not really, no. Um, pun. Uh, the second bottom one's under okay. pun. OK, pun. OK, so we have palindrome versus pun. Uh, Hanifa and Tahira have gone for palindrome. Let's see how many of our 100 people got that. It's right. 46. Drew and Kevin, meanwhile, have gone for pun. Let's see how many of our 100 people got that. 54. That's, that's close. 54 for pun, but very well done. Hanifa and Tira, back in the game. Exactly what we needed from you. After two questions, it's one or all. Um, now, you'll know all of these, I suspect. The, uh, the word formed from the initial letters of other words. Acronym. Acronym. Scored 42, swapping the initial sounds of two or more words. Spoonerism. Spoonerism. Uh, 24, this is the best answer on the board. Uh, the first letter is forming a word. It's an acrostic. Acrostic, yeah. And that would have scored 19. Well done if you said that at home. Thank you very much indeed. OK, it all comes down to the third question. This is the decider. Whoever wins this one goes through to the final. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question is all about people with sports venues and stands named after them. Richard. Yeah, we're going to give you five clues now to people who've had these uh, venues or stands named after them. We'll tell you the city in which uh, that venue is as well. But can you name the person, please? OK. Who are these people with sports stands and venues named after them? French aviator who is the first person to complete a non-stop flight over the Mediterranean Sea, Paris. Dutch football manager who coached South Korea at the 2002 FIFA World Cup finals, Guangzhou. Italian revolutionary who captured Sicily and also has a biscuit named after him, Nice. Jazz trumpeter whose autobiography was entitled Satchmo, My Life in New Orleans, New York. And singer-songwriter whose farewell Yellow Brick Road tour began in September 2018, Watford. I'll read those one last time. French aviator who is the first person to complete a non-stop flight over the Mediterranean Sea. Dutch football manager who coached South Korea at the 2002 FIFA World Cup finals. Italian revolutionary who captured Sicily and also has a biscuit named after him. Jazz trumpeter whose autobiography was entitled Satchmo, My Life in New Orleans. And singer-songwriter whose farewell Yellow Brick Road tour began in September 2018. There we are. Drew and Kevin will go first. Um, we're going to take a bit of a punt on this one. Uh, go for the jazz trumpeter. Um, Miles Davis. OK, Miles Davis, say Drew and Kevin. Hanifa and Tahira, that board's all yours. Do you want to talk us through it? I'd rather not. <laughs> um, <laughs> we only know one. It's the bottom one, and it's Elton John. It's Elton John. You're going to go for Elton John. So we have Miles Davis and we have Elton John. Drew and Kevin have gone for Miles Davis for Satchmo. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people got that. If it is... I'm afraid not Miles Davis, which means, Hanifa and Tahira, you only have to be correct with this to win the point and go through to the final. So let's find out how many of our 100 people said Elton John for Watford. Absolutely <laughs> right. 63. But the crucial thing is it was right, which means you win that point, and after three questions, you're through to the final 2-1.
Yeah, very well played. One person at a poll didn't say Elton John, they said Judy Garland. <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> I can confirm Watford's football stadium is not the Judy Garland stadium. Uh, now, let's fill in the rest of these. Now, the French aviator, this is the, for the French Open tennis. It's played at... Roland Garros. Roland Garros, yep. That would have scored you five points. We'll leave the second one. Uh, now, someone who's had a biscuit named after them. Of course, Nice has also had a biscuit named after it. Uh, Garibaldi. Garibaldi, Giuseppe Garibaldi. Would have scored 33. Now, the jazz trumpeter, not Miles Davis. It's Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong, yep. Would have scored 28. Uh, now, Roland Garros is the best answer on the board, but this uh, runs at a close second. Seven points if you said Gus Hiddink. Gus Hiddink, very good answer. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. I'm afraid, Drew and Kevin, twice now you've been our low-scoring pair coming into the head-to-head, -head, and twice now we've had to say goodbye to you at the end of the head-to-head -head round. I'm so sorry. This is where we actually say a final goodbye. But it's been great having you on the show. Good luck with everything. It's been lovely having you here. Thanks so much, Drew and Kevin. <laughs> well, for Hanifa and Tahira, it is now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Hanifa and Tahira. You've seen off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot and at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £1,000. But, you know, I, I, I said, did I not say, <coughs> I wanted to see you in the head-to-head -head, and I thought you probably would make it there. You've gone one better. This is fantastic. Um, what's going to help you take that jackpot home with you? Anything modern. Modern football. Yeah, football oh. for her. Game of Thrones for me. Love a bit of Game of Thrones. Perfect. Some modern music. Modern music, modern film. OK. Modern. Modern, modern or Game of Thrones. Fine. <laughs> uh, let's see what today's selection looks like. <gasps> People in the UK singles <laughs> charts. <laughs> Films by what's that? Game of Thrones actors. <laughs> Political hopefuls and Grand Slam Tennis in 2019. Hmm. What are we thinking? Well, I know Game of Thrones, but I don't know if I know them well enough to know what else they've been in, because I feel like what I know is going to be obvious. I don't really know much else. Yeah, should we go films? I think films I think by Game of Thrones. We could do that. Uh, we'll go for films by Game of Thrones actors. I think so. Uh, Richard. Yeah, as you say, it's not about Game of Thrones, but um, uh, let's take a look. So we got three people who've been in Game of Thrones. We're looking for any feature film made for cinema release up to the end of June 2019 that stars one of the following, please. Uh, Diana Rigg, Charles Dance, or Kieran Hines. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. You don't have to answer all three categories. Just focus on whichever ones you like the look of. Are you ready? Yeah. Yep. OK, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK. Who um, are they? <laughs> um, I know who they play, but I just don't know what, what else they've been in. Can I don't you recognise their faces? I can recognise their faces, cos Charles Dance, I believe he plays... Uh, what's his name? The head Lannister. I think it's Ty Tywin Lannister. But I'm just trying to think of maybe what else he's been in, trying to think. And Diana Rigg, I think she plays Lady Olenna. Um, and Kieran Hines, I don't know who plays. Um, just think know. of any films, any old films, maybe. Any old films? Um, I can't old see films. Um, um, uh, um, I thought it would be like maybe the obvious ones. Um, um, think of any old British films. Old British films? Any, what, like any, any British just any, because I don't know any, what they've been in. Um, we, have, we have 20 seconds. Um, um, Centurions? Uh, okay, we'll go with Centurions. Um, Top Gun? Stupid one, but we'll go with that. I mean, they've been an Italian job, is that too old? Ten Italian seconds job, maybe. Let's okay. go with that. Should we go with just those three? Because I have no idea what they mean. Um, okay. Any other British film? Um, Should we go with the Harry Potter film? Yeah, let's go with Harry, um, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Yeah. Okay. Okay, there we are. There we are. Our minute is up. That was a tough one for you, I think, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Never mind. You've come <laughs> up with three answers, which is great. Uh, what have you got? Um, we're going to go with Harry Ford, Potter. For uh, Diana Rigg. Yes. We're going to go with Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Uh, for Diana Ring also, we're going to go with Centrinians. Centrinians. And for Charles Dance, we'll go for the Italian job. Yeah. The Italian job. Of those three, do you want to nominate one to be your best shot at a pointless answer? I'm going to go with Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Harry Stone. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone goes last. Least likely to be pointless? Centrinians. Centrinians. OK, we'll put that one first. Let's put those answers up on the board in that order then, and here they are. We have got St Trinian's, The Italian Job, and Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Three answers there. 
any one of those could just turn out brilliantly to be right. And who knows, maybe pointless. If that were to happen and you were to win a thousand quid, what would you like to do with it? Hanifa, you first. Mm. Maybe I'll buy my rabbits some nice toys. Maybe Those I'll get are very one. nice toys. <laughs> <laughs> Tahira. Yeah, no, I'm a bit selfish with that. I'll probably treat myself. Um, I think I think entitled to, yeah. yes. Um, maybe a nice pair of shoes or oh. maybe a nice bag. Very nice. Yeah. Good. Well, let's see what happens uh, when we put these to the test. Your first answer was St Trinian's. In this case, we were looking for any film with Diana Rigg in it. If St Trinian's is right and pointless, you leave here with a thousand pounds. Let's see how many of our 100 people said St Trinian's. <laughs> I'm afraid not St Trinian's. <laughs> that one is incorrect. Let's move on to the Italian job. In this case, we were looking for films with Charles Dance in. If the Italian job is a pointless answer, you leave here with a thousand pounds. How many people said? The Italian job. No, bad luck. <laughs> I'm sorry. Amazing. So we now move to Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I mean, it's a huge film, massive cast. And I have to say, Diana Rigg must surely have been on the casting list, if not, if she's not in it. Let's find out if it's a pointless answer for £1,000. How many people said Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone? No, bad luck. I'm sorry. <laughs> well. It was a real toughie, that round, and that was a valid attempt. You found three plausible answers. They just happened to be wrong. I'm afraid you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so you don't win today's jackpot, but you do each get to take home a fabulous, coveted, pointless trophy, so very well done. For that. Yeah, I mean, the second you said Game of Thrones and then it turned up, it was like a magnetic field pulling you in. There's nothing yeah. you could do, but not the best uh, category. You're right about who uh, Diana Rigg and uh, Charles Dance played, though. You're absolutely right about that. Let's take a look, shall we, at Diana Rigg films. All of these would have won the jackpot. Uh, Good Man in Africa is a pointless answer. Midsummer Night's Dream, uh, The Assassination Bureau with Oliver Reed, that's a good film. The Great Muppet Caper was a pointless answer as well. They're the pointless answers there. Um, Charles Dance now, he's been in all sorts of films, isn't he? Charles Dance. Uh, Plenty was a pointless answer. Space Truckers, Victor Frankenstein, Woman in Gold, loads and loads of pointless yeah, answers there. Uh, Alien 3 and Gosford Park and The Last Action Hero, The Imitation Game for Your Eyes Only, they were the big scorers there. Now, Kieran Hines, he was in he was in the last Harry Potter film, The Deathly Hallows Part 2. Was he? But that would have scored two points. Oh. <laughs> uh, but he was also in Miami Vice, The Cook, uh, The Thief, His Wife and Her Lover, There Will Be Blood. Tinker Taylor, Soldier Spy, he plays um, Roy Bland in that. Uh, the Woman in Black was the biggest uh, answer for him, and Justice League as well, a big answer for Kieran Hines. Thank you very much indeed, Richard, and thank you so much, Hanifa and Tahira. I'm sorry you didn't win our jackpot today. That will therefore roll over onto the next show, when we will be playing for £2,000. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>